the variables that we've been talking about all along are defined in the equation block as shown here. We have here a set of equations that's used as MATLAB type syntax, so most people can understand that fairly well. All the frequencies in this design are defined in gigahertz. Here we've defined the frequency as 200 megahertz and the bandwidth is 0.03 gigahertz or 30 megahertz. And the IF frequency is 70 megahertz. All the other frequency terms are dependent upon these three frequencies. We've also defined the RF power level and some sweeping parameters. And another variable, image reject equals zero with a question mark. What that means is whether we're using an image reject mixer or not. With the zero, it's not an image reject mixer. The question mark means that it'll come up as a tuned variable, which we'll look at later. And that allows us to see the change as we change the image rejection ratio. As we're seeing here, as we change the image rejection with the tune command, we can see with image rejection zero, we have the noise contribution of the mixer is approximately one dB. With the image rejection, the noise contribution of the mixer is approximately 0.2 dB. And the total overall noise figure changes depending on the setting of that for anywhere from 2.6 to 3.4 dB. We're also going to vary the maximum rejection ratio of all the filters. Now in this case, we've tied all the filter maximum rejection ratio. What that means is all the filters have a specification for the maximum rejection. Like if you buy a filter, it can't guarantee infinite rejection at every frequency outside the band. There typically is certain bands that they define a rejection ratio at. In this case, we have we're just using a simple number, but by changing the value, we can change the maximum rejection value and see what effect it has on the overall system performance. Spectral propagation and root cause analysis is one of the most powerful features of spectrosis. Here we have our 70 megahertz output spectrum, and you can see all the other frequency components that are present at the output. What this tells us is at 70 megahertz, we have 3.844 dBm total power. But we also have another component at 70 megahertz, 3.842 dBm. And the D there indicates it's the desired component. This is the one we want. So most of the energy is contained in our desired component. The frequency is a result of the RF signal minus the LO signal. The route that it takes to get here is from component RF01, which is our source, through the LNA, through various filters, attenuator, through the mixer, and then the IF amplifiers, and so on until we get to the final IF amplifier. This allows us to track signals anywhere through the system. You can see there's many other frequency components and we'll be looking more at this a little bit later. For example, here we have other components at 70 megahertz and that's one of the unique capabilities of this program is it can keep track of all the separate components for every signal propagating everywhere through the system both in forward and reverse. But we see for example at 70 megahertz there's a component at minus 31 dBm. Basically it's a third order product from the IF amplifier the big advantage of spectrosis is this allows us to look at all the frequency components propagating anywhere in the system. This so happens to be component number 497. That number is rather arbitrary. But what that says is 
that the third order product being generated, and that's what this result basically says, is from the IF amplifier too. So this is the specific power level of the inner mod product being generated at the output. Here we're looking at the output spectrum again, and we see some other components. At 60 megahertz, we have an in-band signal, because remember our bandwidth is 30 megahertz, so these would be of concern possibly. This is the minus 2 times the RF minus LO minus RF from the first amplifier, or the third order product from the first IF amplifier. Here we have, for instance, a 3 by 2 mixer product that's being processed through the system. And we can see it from this one comes from the mixer, this one and this one come from IF amplifier 01. And then there's another product here. That's the node total at 60 megahertz for the whole thing. Now as we tune the maximum rejection, we can see the effects and we'll be putting a marker on some of these terms. So we have here minus 80 dBm approximately. Now we're going to change the maximum rejection and do some real-time tuning. And you can see here that it's minus 70 with 40 dB rejection, minus 60 with 30. Essentially what we're doing here is we're effectively removing the filter. And we can see with only 20 dB of rejection, we have here about 40 dB down for this product at this frequency, 470 megahertz. Another neat feature of the program is the ability to use the thumb wheel to zoom in frequency-wise. We'll use the thumb wheel on, on the mouse, and we can zoom in to any specific place on the screen and allow us to see, for instance, the 60 and 70 megahertz components clearly separated. There's also another one at approximately 80 megahertz, but it's below the noise floor, which is the green line. Next, we want to see another very powerful feature of the program is the ability to probe the schematic. And we can probe the schematic at any point, add a new graph, and this one's at the mixer output, and you can see a whole bunch of stuff here. For instance, there's a third order product there. Here's the sum product of 200 plus 270. Here's the 270, that's the LO leak through. And here's our desired 70 megahertz, and you can see the little D there in front of it indicating it's the desired product. 